Hi. Thank you guys for having me, and thank you. I'm glad sharing the stage with Lauren and Omar and John. I started reading Omar's book last night. It's a really great book. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, so my name is Imbolo Mbwe, and I'm saying my name again because people mispronounce my last name a lot. They say Imbolo Mbu, Mabu, it's just Mbwe. It's one last, one syllable. Um, so my name is Imbolo Mbwe. I, um, I, um, I was born in Cameroon. I came, in Amer came to America um, when I was 17 um, to go to college here. And I am the author of Behold the Dreamers, um, which is a novel about a working class immigrant family from my country. Um, they came to America, and the father in that family gets a job as a chauffeur for uh, a Wall Street executive. This is in uh, 2007. And the story is about what happens to this family, this immigrant family, and to the family of the man who um, the father works for um, during the financial crisis. The man, the, the executive works for Lehman Brothers, and, and we get to see how the lives of these two very different families are affected um, by the financial crisis, and also how the ways in which their, um, their lives intersect. These two very different families, one is a working class immigrant family, and one is a wealthy um, Upper East Side Manhattan family. And uh, but we get to understand how they, they each share the same kind of dreams for themselves and for their children. Um, this, they want the children to be successful. They want to have happy marriages. Um, so I came to write in this book because I had lost my job in 2009. I was working um, for a media company. And this is during the financial crisis, essentially. And I lost my job. And one day I was walking down the street, and I saw chauffeurs and executives. And I thought, what is it like? You know, these two men in the car together. Um, what is the relationship like, and, and um, in which ways did the financial crisis affect them? Because I had lost my job. So I started writing this book, which in many ways I thought it was about dreams, right? I thought it was about dreams, about family, and about, um, you know, just wanting to, um, to, to live in America and to have, you know, this American dream life. But it also is very much about, you know, coming to this country as an immigrant and what it was like. And, and the book came out in 2016, in August of 2016, just before the presidential election. And the, um, one of the first reviews of the book was by the Washington Post, and the title was Behold the Dreamers, the one novel Donald Trump should read. And so because of that, I had to answer a lot of questions. So, <laughs> so Imbolo, tell us why Donald Trump should read your book. And I said, oh, thankfully, I don't have to hear this again after November 8th, because it will be over. I don't have to ever deal with this. But I had a hard time answering that question. You know, why should Donald Trump read my book? Why should anybody read my book? Um, and I struggled to answer that question. Um, and after November 8th, I had to answer it even more, right? Now he's the president. Why should he read your book? Um, and, and now I think about it. I think, you know, why should anybody read any book, right? Why should anybody read any novel, any work of fiction or not fiction? And I think that it really comes down to the importance of stories. You know, ultimately, it's about stories and the roles they play in life and in societies and in communities. Um, I have done quite a few events ever since my book came out. And the, the one thing that people say to me all the time is, you know, I never thought about the story. About, you know, I mean, you hear about you know, lots of great immigrant works out there. But every story is unique. I mean, everybody has a unique story. And I, I've noticed that. Part of what we're dealing with is that we don't really know each other's stories as much as we could. You know, how much do you really know about the next person sitting next to you? What do you know about them? What they've been through? Where they came from? What their dreams are? What their hopes are? What their struggles are? Uh, even your next door neighbor, you know, your coworkers. We really don't really know each other's stories. And and what literature does, what books do, for the most part, is that they tell us stories. And in knowing one story, you get to see them a whole, in a whole new light. And so when, you know, the Washington Post was talking about, you know, the one of Donald Trump to read, I think it was saying essentially about any book, right, that, you know, we should read this book because this is one story that you should know, and this is another story that you know, and, you know, in a world of seven billion people, maybe we could all take time to learn more, to know more stories. And so um, when I speak to, you know, to college students and in general in the talk, I said, I have learned that, you know, we should spend more time asking each other to tell us their stories and that we, should, we could do a better job of sharing our stories with each other also. Um, because 
I never thought that, I don't know, I've never, I have no creative writing background. I used to work in marketing. I had a, a master's in education and psychology. My plan was to be a college professor um, and hopefully end up in this room instead of standing here. Uh, <laughs> um, that did not work out for me. Because, um, but it's, you know, it, it's the whole idea that the word I've learned is that, you know, by telling each other these stories, we open, um, you know, a whole new world, you know, to ourselves. Especially in this time where we're putting people in boxes, right? This person is an immigrant. This person is, you know, in Middle America, whatever. But there are individuals behind that story. Um, and the other thing that I um, has been said to me about my novel a lot, because like I said, it is about, um, you know, a working class immigrant family that came to America, and also this upper class family and. On the surface, this upper class family has achieved the American dream. They have nice houses, their children go to good schools, they have everything material wise, and but they also have their own struggles. And people have said to me, well, Imbolo, your novel is very harsh on the American dream. You know, people are either struggling to achieve the American dream or if they achieved it, if they've achieved it, um, they're not as happy. So what do you really think of the American dream? Uh, because look at you, you came from you came to America from a small African country and you wrote a book and but then you know look at you today and next thing you know you're having drinks with Oprah in her mansion, you know. So <laughs> um, and it is true, right? You know, I did get a call from Oprah and you can see the sticker of my book. I went to her house <laughs> and and it was really fun. <laughs> um, but the again, like Omar mentioned earlier, you know, there's there's so much nuance and complexity to the story. You know, it's easy to say, oh, you know, you're an immigrant and you came here and, yeah, America works, right? Look at this story. But there's, there are other parts of the story also, you know. I mean, if I tell you some of the jobs I've done in this country, you know, the story is not so wonderful after all. I mean, I can tell you about what it was like selling vacuum cleaners from door to door. And if you want to know, it wasn't a fun job, you know. I mean, you basically take this vacuum cleaner to somebody's house and you say, okay, I'm going to demonstrate to you how wonderful this vacuum cleaner is. And then you vacuum their rug. Right? You show them how work, good it works, and then they say, thanks, I'm not buying it after you've already vacuumed your rug. <laughs> and I did that a few times, and I never saw one vacuum cleaner. But that is part of my American story, and it is a, it's, 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 it's complex. It's, this novel was inspired by many people I know who you know, think wonderful things about America. And as much as people might think that it is um, a bit harsh in this treatment of America, it is still a love song to America. This country has been good to me. I mean, I've had my rough times here, but I, I consider my novel to be a love song to a country which is so complex, is so deeply flawed, very flawed, but so beautiful also. Um, I, um, it's a love song to New York City, which is my adopted hometown, and to my homeland of Cameroon, and to my hometown. Um, and I, I also think that I wanted to explore how I feel about this country, how in spite of how much I love it, I also struggle with it, and, and there are many times when I thought I'm going to just leave. I thought I should just pack up and leave. It's not working for me. I don't really believe in it, but I stayed. Um, and when I speak in colleges, I, the students usually ask me, oh, Imbola, what advice do you have for me? You know, as, as a student, what, should, what do you want to tell me? And I'm always very cautious, right? What, you know, giving advice to people and to college students, uh, but I, I tell them the importance of curiosity and asking questions. Um, that is, you know, a big, big part of my journey as a writer. You know, questioning the world. Most of us writers here, it's asking questions. Um, you know, not just taking what you've been told by anybody, but discovering for yourself. And more importantly, not only just finding the answers, but applying them to your own life. You know, because we're living in a time where people think that it's about other people. Right? Other people are not doing enough. You know. The Democrats are too this, the Republicans are too that, you know, liberal Americans are too this. But I think that I have learned that in writing this novel that I had to find out for my own self how to apply these lessons to my own life. I had to ask myself, you know, in which ways am I contributing to the way this country is? Because it's easy to say, okay, you know, Donald Trump is a racist, so he's a sexist. Oh, I'm not a racist, I'm not a sexist. I, you know, I opened the door for a guy in a wheelchair, unlike, you know, other people. But uh, being a writer pushed me to look at my own self, you know, not to look at the world around me, but to say, what is my role in making the world the way it is? You know, in which ways am I falling short? And so that is what I tell the young people, that um, 
the characters in this novel, they're very flawed. And they make a lot of mistakes. But by having you know, empathy for yourself and to understand that you each play a role, that it's not only about everybody, because no, the world is not going to get better for other people's change, because you do your own part. And so I encourage them to, um, to look at themselves and to find ways in which they can improve their own lives and you know, be better citizens. And because ultimately, that is what makes a difference um, in encouraging people to, um, to look at the system. You know, the system is people. The system is all of us. We are institutions. And this country is, is, is people that make the country. And which, whatever, however way we decide to, um, to live our lives, it's reflected in the way the country becomes. And I think it's, you know, America is a country that is really worth fighting for. And that, you know, by each of us doing our, our own, um, doing our parts, that we can each make a difference. Thank you. <laughs>